We need the rescue hoist when it's impossible to land very close to the patient and also when the patient can't be reached or rescued on foot. In the woods, such as in a forestry accident, we set the doctor down somewhere in a small clearing. Generally, for hiking and climbing accidents in the mountains, we also need the rescue hoist, where the steep terrain makes landing impossible. Then I pull down the hoist cable. Then I attach Matthias to the cable. Now he's securely attached. On the pilot's orders, I lower the doctor out of the helicopter and inform the pilot so that he knows that the doctor is now suspended from the hoist cable. OK, Matthias is ready to be let down. Great, about 60 meters of cable. OK. Then the command comes from the pilot. Doctor down. And I confirm with hoist is running. Hoist is running. Because my view below is restricted, I also need the hoist operator to brief me. I can see some things in the mirror, but not everything that's going on beneath us. Therefore, the communication between us is extremely important. You could say that we're the eyes of the pilot. I describe everything that's happening in the helicopter cabin very precisely. The pilot has to have an exact picture of what's going on. That's why we communicate very clearly and distinctly. Position is good. 10 meters above ground. Just setting him down. Yes, that's good. The helicopter requires another dimension. It has something hanging underneath it, a doctor. The difficulty lies in controlling the helicopter and preventing the cable from swinging backwards and forwards, even when the doctor is hanging 50 meters below the helicopter. Hoist is fully retracted. OK, doors closed. Great. This hoist has 90 meters of cable, of which we can use 85 meters. The hoist takes a maximum load of 272 kilos. It's limited by the electric motor, not the steel cable. We can retract these 272 kilos at a maximum speed of 45 meters per minute. So it takes just two minutes to draw up the full length of the cable when it's carrying a full load. 